to the plan, declared one FBI report, Oppenheimer will first travel to England. From England, he will travel to France, and while in France, he will vanish into Soviet hands. Actually, Oppenheimer sat on the beach for a few weeks. Then he went home to New Jersey. He continued working in Princeton until his retirement in 1966. That same year, he was diagnosed with cancer of the throat. He died in 1967 at the age of 62. All the while, the arms race expanded. In 1954, the United States tested a massive 15 megaton hydrogen bomb on the tiny Pacific island of Bikini Atoll. A cloud of radioactive dust spread over the 7,000 square miles of ocean. To this day, the radioactive soil of Bikini Atoll makes the island uninhabitable. Soviet bomb makers responded with the biggest atomic explosion in history, an incredible 50 megaton monster. The test knocked down brick buildings 25 miles from the blast. The shockwave cracked windows 500 miles away. Other countries decided they needed the bomb as well. Great Britain tested its first atomic bomb in 1952. France followed with its first bomb test in 1960. Then came China in 1964 and India in 1974. The United States and Soviet Union continued racing. The race was no longer to build bigger bombs. The bombs were already too big for any possible target. The race was to, the race was to build more bombs in faster and more accurate ways to deliver them by airplane, submarine, and missile. By the mid-1980s, the two sides had a total of 65,000 nuclear bombs. Each side could now destroy the other cities within minutes of the start of the war. The rivals had enough bombs to destroy all human life, many times over. The world has since stepped back a bit from this cliff. In the late 1980s, the United States and USSR began negotiating treaties to reduce the number of atomic weapons. The reductions have continued since the end of the Cold War. Together, the United States and Russia now have about 22,000 atomic weapons. But other countries have joined the nuclear club. Pakistan tested a uranium fission bomb in 1998. North Korea has had the bomb since 2006. Israel may have about 80 atomic bombs, though it will not officially confirm or deny its bomb program. In 2011, United Nations inspectors announced that they have found evidence that Iran was very likely working in secret to build its own atomic arsenal. The big question is, will any of these bombs ever be used? Most of the world's atomic bombs are still in the hands of the United States and Russia. And while our two countries are not exactly friendly, tensions are far lower than they were during the Cold War. For now, at least, it's hard to imagine a realistic series of events that could lead to a massive exchange of atomic bombs. But other dangers exist. One is the nightmare scenario of a terrorist group getting hold of an atomic weapon. Another is that an actual government, like the secretive rulers of North Korea, might just be crazy enough to lash out with atomic bombs. Or, long-time enemies, India and Pakistan, could go to war, as they have several times, and this time the shooting could escalate into a nuclear battle. And if you think atomic explosions in, a, in Asia wouldn't affect Americans, consider this. A study published in Scientific America in 2010 looked at the probable impact of a small nuclear war, one in which India and Pakistan dropped 50 atomic bombs. The scientists concluded that the explosions would ignite massive firestorms, sending enormous amounts of dust and smoke into the atmosphere. This would block some of the sun's light from reaching the Earth, making the planet colder and darker for about 10 years. Farming would collapse and people all over the globe would starve to death. And that's if only half of 1% of all the atomic bombs on Earth were used. In the end, this is a difficult story to sum up. The making of the atomic bomb is one of history's most amazing examples of teamwork and genius and poise under pressure. But it's also the story of how humans created a weapon capable of wiping our species off the planet. It's a story with no end in sight. And like it or not, you're in it. <laughs>